our distinct uh, privilege and pleasure on this morning, amen, to, uh, to present to us on this morning, amen, Apostle uh, 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 Epps and Prophetess Carolyn Epps all the way from Virginia, amen. And I thank the Lord for it, amen. So I'm going to tell y'all, amen. Now, if you're wise, you'll put your cup out. And if you're wise and still, you'll borrow one from your neighbor. And if you're still wise, you'll borrow some from your other neighbor. Come on, y'all, amen. It depends on how much y'all want. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. And so we thank the Lord for it on this morning. Amen. Let's stand and receive. Amen. Apostle on this morning. Brother Calvin, he's got the. Turn him on. Let's give God praise. Come on, let's bless the one that really matters. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. We magnify you, Lord. We honor you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. How many know that the Lord said that, or that David said that the Lord is great, and then he's greatly to be praised? Hallelujah. Not in a small measure. Hallelujah. Not in a, in, in, in a, a moderate measure. He said he is greatly to be praised. Amen. So come on, let's give him some greatly. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory, Jesus. Huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Woo! Yes. You're worthy, Lord. It's your praise, it's your glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen. Let me tell you what you just did. Yeah. If God could be nervous, if he could be nervous <laughs> about anything, praise will do it. <laughs> put, put him right on the edge of his seat. <laughs> See, I can't wait, amen, to stand in the midst of my people. I can't wait to bring healing and deliverance to their soul and spirit. I can't wait to reveal my glory. Hallelujah! Can, can I tell you that you don't have a you don't have a problem today? Hallelujah! All you need is some faith operating. All you need, amen, is to put God in position to release his promise, amen. Yes. 
See, you, you got to know that God is working in your behalf. And he's working from the inside out. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's working from the inside out. God wants you to have an inside out relationship with him. We're going to go to the word of God. Amen. But I want you to have a sense of expectation. Amen. That God has done for you what you have need of. And you're looking for the manifestation. Hallelujah. You're not talking to him and saying, if it be your will. Because that work is already finished. Hallelujah. Just, just, just tell three people it's finished. Hallelujah. It's finished. It's finished. My situation is finished. Hallelujah. And I'm looking for manifestation. I'm looking for it to show up. Hallelujah. Not, not going to turn my eyes down or turn them to the side. I'm looking for my manifestation. Hallelujah. Go ahead. You can be seated. I, I, need, to, I need to get. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're looking for manifestation. Uh, Lord, it haven't showed up yet, but I know it's coming. Hallelujah. And, and, and let me say it this way. We gotta say, uh, we're going to change our rhetoric. Not going to say to the Lord, I'm looking for my manifestation and it's coming. I'm going to say, Lord, I'm looking for my manifestation because I have power to step into it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on now. Yes. Uh, it, I'm on my way to it. Hallelujah. So don't worry about a thing. Just stay right there. I'm on my way. I'm coming to step into. See, how we think about our situation is the greatest challenge to us. It's not the situation. It's how we think about it. See, because if you see it as a small thing, you'll treat it as a small thing. If you see it as overwhelming, you'll treat it as overwhelming. And what God wants us to understand is he doesn't need you to be anxious about anything because uh, uh, the Roman writer, Paul, said that God has given us everything. Everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if I stay focused with the heart and the mind of God, I'm going to walk right into everything. See, can we hear this this morning? Because there's a, there's a, a, a greater liberty that's coming to you. There's a greater liberty that's coming to you, but it's, it's got to be worked from the inside out. Somebody say inside out. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm not so much focused anymore on what's around me. Hallelujah. Because God has told us to walk in dominion. He's told us that we're carrying the eternal uh, 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 glory of God inwardly. And what I'm looking for is to be able to walk in a way that it begins to manifest. I, I want to see... What God says is the hope of glory in me. So we've got to get out of that place where we're intimidated or we're suffering some sense of loss because we have not attained as yet 
But the apostle Paul said it this way. He said, I count not myself to have apprehended. Hallelujah. But this one thing I do. I forget everything that's in the past and I reach forth. In other words, I'm, I'm walking towards something. I'm going to enter into something. And so that's the part that God wants us to get today, that you're walking towards something. It may not look like it's uh, anything great or significant in the position that you're in now, but this is not your, your, your final uh, position. It's a temporary place. So I'm not going to be discouraged because I haven't attained as yet. Because I'm walking out of this place. Tell your neighbor, you're going to walk out. You're going to walk out, amen. There is a mystery. You've heard me say this before. And it's not going to change. There's a mystery that's working in you. I know that Colossians says that Christ in you, the hope of glory, is in you. But see, I, I, I need him to manifest. I need this hope of glory to manifest. I need to see visible demonstration and operation of this hope of glory. So what God says in his word is he says, I'm going to teach you about your identity. See, because you can't attain independent of your association with him and Christ has an identity and because he dwells in us, we have an identity. We have a Christ identity. And it's the Christ identity. It's not, it's not my identity in the natural that's going to, to give me what I need to acquire. It's the Christ identity. Being associated, being aligned with him, and being connected to the extent that when you see me, you see him. And so God wants you to be connected in the way that when they see you, they see him. Now, in, in, in years gone by, we tried to fulfill that aspect of it, and we tried to do it from the natural perspective. We told women, you need to wear dresses down to your ankles. We told them you couldn't wear no jewelry, don't put, don't put no makeup on. We, we told them all that stuff. We told, we told the men that he could, men, you can't go around with your arms bare. If you wear a cross, you got to put it in your shirt pocket. All of that's foolishness. Because God is addressing us from the inside out. And if my heart is right, it will make me do the thing that's if my heart is not right it don't make no difference what I do if my heart's not right cause I can dress it up on the outside and still be held on the inside are we here so God's helping us to transition in relationship and in intimacy in a way that will allow us to become a visible demonstration of what's on the inside that brings the glory of Christ. It's already in you. Just tell your neighbor, it's already in you. But God got to work it out. Oh, boy. Boy, that's some good stuff right there. I'm preaching better than you responding. <laughs> <laughs> that's some good stuff right there and, and then God do a little funny stuff he put folk around you that just seem to stir up everything that's in you huh huh come on now come on God, God, God put some folk in your path 
that just seem to irritate every possible place. <laughs> and, and see, what we do is we think it's, it's about the person. It's not about the person. It's about what God is trying to get to you through that process. So he got to stir some stuff up to help us realize this is what's in you and I need to dig it out so that when I dig it out, I can replace it with myself. Are we here? Come on now, your, your spirit is saved, but your soul ain't saved. God is processing you to save your soul. I need my thinking and I need my senses and my emotions to line up with my spirit. Are we here? And so some of the, I'm, you know, we prophetic people, but everything we think ain't right. <laughs> See, because sometimes we think everything we say is the Lord. No, it ain't. Everything you're thinking ain't the Lord. God got to tell you what he's thinking. Are we here? Just, just, just put your hand on your belly. Say, Lord, you got to tell me what you think. And you got to show me how to walk in it. See, because God will tell us stuff and we think we know how to go about processing what he told us. See, but God's intent is that you never be able to attain independent of him. Because there's, it's all about glory. Glory says, look what God has done. Not what I did, not what mama and them did, but what God has done. Are we here? And so if, if, if the glory in your life's going to be right, you're first and foremost going to know you didn't have nothing to do with it. It wasn't you. Just tell your neighbor, it wasn't me. Because <laughs> I was jacked up. I was simple. I was confused. Come on now. See, you know, church folk won't talk truth with themselves. Amen. And then we get mad when God sends somebody to talk truth to us. Amen. But if you talk truth to yourself, amen, then you can, you, you can affirm what other folk are saying. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I missed it right there. You, come, come on, pray with me. Can I get some grace? Can, can you love on me in this place? Are we here? Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 20. I, I, I love this scripture, Proverbs 20. And we're going to read verse uh, 27. Solomon says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. Is, is that what your book says? Hallelujah. I want to look at that. I'm going to look at that in the uh, Message Bible. You know, the Message Bible have a way of putting a slant on some things. You know, giving us a, a little more down to earth kind of uh, mindset. Who has that? God is in charge. God is in charge. Oh my God. Go ahead. God's in charge of human life. Watching and examining us inside and out. What? God is in charge. And he's watching us and examining us. Inside, because what's inside is going to come outside. 
So it's God that's doing this. You, you, you're trying to figure out why you feel some kind of way. <laughs> it's because God has got you under examination. And he's trying to help you to figure out some things in your life that need to be dealt with so that he can bring what is on the inside to a head, root it out, release the, 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 the God character in you so that you begin to demonstrate him. Are we here? So you can't take it as woe is me and why is this happening to me and why am I going through this? You already know why. God wants a different result. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> He's examining us where? Inside and out. Hallelujah. So, it, 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 let's think about this. Most times, most people are worried about what has been demonstrated. In other words, this brother do something and, and, and we're looking at what was the results in what he did. But that's not what's significant. What's significant is, is why did he do what he did? Because we have to get to the root of the issue if we're going to help him. And so the people of God have to walk through some places where they gain some, some insight and they get some wisdom so that they can go and demonstrate in the lives of others from the place where they have been helped. So I can come to this brother and say, look, man, I can help you here because I went through the same thing. And this is what God showed me. And this is what he did in me so that now I have compassion for you and I can help you through the process. Are we here? Why? Because the vision of this ministry has to do with changing the community. And if you're going to change the community, you have to be able to demonstrate something different from what the community is used to. You, you can't go out of the church and demonstrate the same thing that the community is already experiencing. There's got to be a difference. You've got to be able to say to the prostitute, God will deliver you because I was a prostitute and God delivered me. You got to be able to say to the drug addict, I know God can deliver you because I was a drug addict. So the working of your process in you is not to bring shame. And a lot of times we take it that way. We, we are ashamed of the fact that we had failures. Listen, the world is full of people that have failed. I guarantee you if there's seven billion, every one of them have failed. <laughs> and none of them have a heaven or a hell to put you in. So you can be naked and exposed and unashamed because God brought you through. Are we here? And, and we have to embrace that. We have to embrace that. God is examining us from the inside out. And the vision of this house is going to is going to, to bring many uh, deliverances and many healings because the people have been examined from the inside out. And they have been processed in change and now the glory of God rests upon them. And when you're walking in the glory, <laughs> 
When you're walking in the glory, everything changes. Hallelujah. Moses was so adamant about the glory, he said, look, I ain't moving unless you go with me. I need to see your glory. <laughs> Amen. I don't need to see Moses' glory, Moses' glory. I don't need to see the glory of the system of this world. I need to see your glory. And when God passed by me, he began to say things that had to do with the virtue of the character of God. Let's go there. Let's go to Deuteronomy 33. Is that it? Hallelujah. Is that it? Let me get it in the King James. Maybe it's 32. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My internet went out. This it's got me hung up here. What I'm trying to say to you is that God wants you to understand that there are that in the character of God there is virtue 3315 alright I'm in 33 I just couldn't see the there, there are virtues that God wants to be demonstrated somebody say demonstrated, demonstrated. in our character because we have been with him amen that, that, that God begins to, to magnify his, his word in us and his ways in us uh, to enable us yeah, to go before us. It, Exodus. What did I say? Deuteronomy. Yeah, Exodus. Thank you for your help. My, my iPad is running slow because I lost the internet. Hallelujah. There we go. Thank you. So he said, he said to the Lord, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, if your presence go not with me, Carry us not up from here. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? See, in your situation, you don't want to move until God bring visible demonstration. Because otherwise, the world is going to look at you and say, God brought you to this place and he left you. Are you here? In other words, it gives them opportunity to criticize and find fault with your God. So we have to understand that we have to stick to it in our process so that God can be glorified. Right? He said, for wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? How's this going to be known? Is it not in that you go with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. The difference between you and the world is the visible demonstration of the word of God manifested to prove that our God is greater than the world. Are we hearing? He said, and the Lord said to Moses, 
I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Boy, that's just so good. That, that, that's just so good. Because, listen, the, the word of God, David asked the question, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? Right there in your circumstance that God is opening up God is remembering that you belong to him, that he knows your name, hallelujah, and that you are significant to him and the purposes of the kingdom. Just tell somebody I'm valuable. Tell them this is valued treasure right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that, that God is not picking on you. He's trying to demonstrate who you are. Are you listening? This is my son. This is the anointed of the Lord. This is one that I've chosen from the foundation of the world. This is one that's walking in right relationship with me. Hallelujah. Are we hearing for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. Even though my situation is messed up, I got grace. Grace is always sufficient to what you're dealing with. I have found grace. I can get through it. I can demonstrate. I can walk it out. Because God knows my name. And he said, I, I beseech thee, show me your glory. You see, the glory always speaks to the end process. Glory can't come until it's all over. And Moses said, Lord, I want you to show me in the appropriate time that it is over. Some of you getting ready to step into, the, into your glory. Uh, you've been in the process long enough. You've weathered the storm. You've endured the hardship, amen, as a good soldier. Now glory is getting ready to show up. Hallelujah. Visible evidence, visible manifestation that God has done it. Look what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Somebody said, watch out. I don't want to run you over. But my glory is getting ready to show up. Hallelujah. So God wants to expect. Amen. Tell somebody, say, I'm expecting. Now listen to what God said. God's talking to Moses about the whole situation. He said, I will make my goodness pass before thee. I will proclaim <laughs> the name of the Lord before you. God said, I'm going to declare my own name. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, I'm going to declare my own name before you. Amen. So there's no mistaking that this is God. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And see, this is why sometimes you look at a person's life and you figure, amen, that, well, I should have been, I should have been at least as far along as they are. I should get the same privilege that they got. But see, you don't know how attentive they were in their process to hearing and obeying God. You don't know, amen, their fellowship of faith with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So he said, you, you can't see my face, for no man shall see my face and live. And the Lord said, behold, there's a place by me. There's a place by me. Because you have not entered into the next covenant. 
because in the next covenant, I won't dwell by you. I'm going to dwell in you. Hallelujah. But there's a place by me. I'm getting ready to put you in that place, right? And you're going to stand upon a rock. See, because the promises of God that have been given to us come out of the rock. So I'm going to cause you to be identified with what's coming. <laughs> I'm going to cause you to be identified with the rock of salvation. I'm going to cause you to see a glory that you've never seen before. I'm going to cause you to know the evidence of what I prepared from the foundation of the world. You, you, you know why David was such a great prophet? Even in all of his failure? Because he learned a secret. He learned how to tap in to our dispensation. David said, listen, it's good that we got the tabernacle. It's good that the priest can go in once a year and offer for our sins. He said, but I'm going to build a tabernacle over here that's going to be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I'm going to bring my praise and my worship to the God of heaven because I recognize that there's a dispensation and a time that's going to be given and I want to tap into the glory. Hallelujah. That's why I can say, my Lord has said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make all of your enemies your footstool. He tapped in. Moses had to get a glimpse of what had been prepared. Tell your neighbor, say, you just need a glimpse. I, I know you're having some challenges, but you just need a glimpse. Hallelujah. Let's finish that. Hallelujah. He goes on and he says, My God. And it shall come to pass while my glory passes by that I'll put thee in a cleft of the rock. Somebody coined that song, Rock of Ages. Cleft for me. Let me hide. <coughs> he says, I'm going to cover you with my hand while I pass by. And I'm going to take away my hand and thou shalt see my back parts. But thou shalt not see my face. The Bible says now that we are looking in a glass darkly. <laughs> but the time will come when we will see him face to face. Hallelujah. God wants us to understand, amen, that we're working with something that's tangible, something that is so relevant, it changes the, the, the circumstances and the conditions of every kingdom. The kingdom of God and his Christ in you swallows up every other kingdom. You're not bound, you're not obligated, you're not uh, 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 suppressed or subdued. You're not brought under the authority of any other kingdom because the kingdom of God and our Christ is working in you. 
Can, can we get this? But God wants you to work from the inside. Woo! Tell your neighbor, say, work in it. Now listen to this. We're called to process in grace and I will as I'm processing in the grace I will it will bring visible demonstration to my life and out of that visible demonstration in my life it's going to reveal and bring forth life to others everything in your process is so that you have the ability to bring life to others. We have the privilege of living out of what we experience, but it's not just for you. Are you hearing? God delivered you for your sake, but also for the sake of the kingdom, that the kingdom of God can advance. Because God won't violate his word. He needs a body to operate in the earth. So God's not going to violate his word. He's not going to, to trample his word. He's going to keep his word. So he's always looking to use whoever will yield to him and submit to him for his namesake. The question today is, is that you? <laughs> what are you willing to do? Say, it's not a question of, of uh, not being able to do because God already said, I'm going to give you grace. And the only part that, I, that, I, that I'm equipped to work out is the part that I have yielded in. And out of that yielding, I'm now equipped to be able to go and demonstrate. Are you hearing? What are you equipped to do? What have you yielded to God and you can go forth and demonstrate. And, and, and let me help us. Because the mystery of Christ is so great in you, what you've already yielded to is not all there is. See, because religion taught us, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, that with the mighty burning fire, no evil have I done. And listen, that's, that's, a, that's a great statement, but it is a mindset that brings limitation because what I've received is not all there is to receive. And I've got to know that I'm always in a continual operation of grace and the presence of God to be changed and molded and shaped according to his design. So whatever I am now is not the conclusion of the matter. Whatever you are now is not the conclusion of the matter. God's got greater for you. He's got more for you. He's got a place of exchange that can only come by process. <laughs> and so your process is... is is an encouragement to make an exchange with the Holy Spirit. Woo, Jesus. I'm going to trade what I am now for what I am to become. Come on, put your hand on your belly. Say it with me. Lord, I'm willing to change what I am now to become, to become what you have created me to be, created me to be. From, the from the foundation of the world. 
Now let me mess this all up. Whatever it takes, Lord, I give you permission to work it in me. <laughs> ah. Hallelujah. Is this helping us today? God, God, listen, God love you so much that he's willing to take you to the conclusion. <laughs> he's willing to take you all the way there. Amen. Because his delight is to establish his glory. So we're called to this process in grace. Uh, uh, and then God, what he works in your life, he will use to reveal life to others. Hallelujah. So here's how he says that. He says, behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. But you can't tread on serpents and scorpions until you've been worked through some process. Amen. Amen. You, you got to be able to recognize how serpents and scorpions operate. You got to have a firsthand experience. And so God lets you walk through some places where you've been bit, where you've been kicked, where you've been lied on, where you've been mistreated. Are you here? So that you can recognize some things that when you come through that place, you're not scared of serpents and scorpions. He said, over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. Hallelujah. So we got we to gotta, we gotta let God prove us so that we're not anxious when we come into confrontation. Are you hearing? Well, yeah, you're going to have confrontation now. You, you're going you're gonna to have some things that are going to challenge you, but God doesn't want you nervous. Matter of fact, God wants you to be able to say what David said when he went out to face Saul. He said, you show up here with a, a sword and a spear? He said, I come in the name of the Lord. Are you hearing? Because the weapons of our warfare are not, they're mighty through God. Pulling down strongholds and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. But that's got to be worked in you. Hallelujah. Somebody said, oh, but the Bible says all you have to do is believe. You ain't going to believe what you're afraid of. You, you're not going to believe when you're operating in fear. And the unknown makes us fearful. So God have to prove you in some places so that when you see it, it gets your back up. Me like, what? You want to fight? Let's do it. Ain't nobody scared of you, devil. Amen. Amen. Ain't nobody scared of you. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's rumble. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's do this. I told this guy one time, I said, he was kind of in my space, and I was young. And I told him, I said, you better back up off of me before something happened to you. And he was a little guy. He said, come on. <laughs> he, he wasn't scared of no talk. Amen. He said, come on. We got to understand that the enemy is not afraid of talk. What he is afraid of is your faith and your confidence in Jesus Christ.
That's what he's, that's what he's fearful of. And he's afraid that you're going to wake up one day and realize who God is in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, he, he's, he's, he's wanting to intimidate and steal from you to keep you off balance so that you never discover that you're greater than he is. But when you get up in the morning, he ought to be going, my God, they're up again. <laughs> Another bad day for me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Now, final statement, and then, and then I'm going to shut it down. Life, your whole life, is about seed time and harvest. Everything that's going on with you is about seed time and harvest. God is trying to, to, to bring forth out of you by the process of seed so that you can be a harvest for the kingdom. This is why he said in, I think it's Luke 2, he says, uh, every tr uh, tree uh, that beareth fruit, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prune it so that it'll bring forth more fruit. Well, the pruning has to do with God opening up areas in your life to be dealt with that are going to align you to the greater purpose of the kingdom. See, it's not, it's not just snip, snip, you know, like we cut branches off, but that's the metaphor, that God is opening up something in your life that you're going to deal with right in the midst of your productivity, right in the midst of your being focused and being faithful and being a blessing, he's going he's gonna to prune you so that you become an even greater influence for the kingdom. Are we here? And so we have to, we have to recognize, we have to understand that our process is... Uh, a, a good place for us to allow God to, to not only demonstrate and make visible, but also uh, be able to, to increase the level of grace and purpose on our lives. Are you hearing? God wants to increase the level of grace and purpose in your life. All right? And so the kingdom does it by seed time and harvest. What does it mean? It means that, that I, have to, I have to become a seed in certain areas of my living so that God can bring forth a harvest that expands the kingdom. But as the kingdom is expanding, God is also expanding my life. How's he expanding my life? Well, one of the scriptures, and I'm just going to give you this one because it was, it was good to me. Uh, let's go to, I want to say Joshua. Let me find it here. I'm sorry, my, my iPad moving kind of slow. He says to Joshua, he said, look, I've given you nations, I've given you cities, I've given you vineyards. He said, you're eating from food that you didn't plant? Are you seeing? See, God wants to expand us. Because when he's able to expand us, he brings an extraordinary level of favor upon our lives that gives us an even greater uh, evidence of his kingdom. Are you hearing? Yes. See, because you need evidence of the kingdom on every level, not just where you're standing. Yes. Amen? There are some levels that God wants to elevate you into, but you have to become a seed. Yes. Yes. And you have to allow the pruning to take place. See, 
Joshua was pruned. He was pruned. He went out, did what the Lord told him. I think he subdued some 30-something nations. And God said, I'm giving you all of this. I'm giving my people all of this because you allowed me to work this process in you. He said, and now I'm bringing a greater level of demonstration. You didn't work for this. It's not even the fact that you deserve it. But because I love you, because you uh, 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 allowed me to, to engage you in a process and you received my righteousness in that process, he said, now I'm going to cause you to eat from places where you didn't plant. Are you here? How would it be if unexpectedly you got a check in the mail for $100 million? Just tell your neighbor, you're going to need some pruning. <laughs> Amen. And, 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 Amen, because everybody can't handle $100 million. Amen. And so if you're having trouble paying your tithes, if you're having trouble, amen, uh, uh, giving your offering or sowing a seed when God tells you to sow a seed or invest a seed, if you're having trouble now, don't worry, $100 million ain't coming. Because you don't have enough process to be able to handle what God would give to you. So your process is, is really preparation for what's coming. Amen. Because God's got some things that he wants to work in your life, and he can't do it until he get a certain cultivation in your life so that you're, you're a kind of soil that can take what, he, what he's bringing forth. Amen. That's why I say you can't look at people and say, well, well God bless them, why didn't he bless me? He wants to bless you. But you don't know what they've been processed through. You don't know how they've been cultivated. You don't know how their ground has been enhanced to be able to receive what he's bringing forth. Hallelujah. So you got to embrace what the Spirit is doing. Tell your neighbor, say embrace it. Embrace it's going to work you out. Hallelujah. Amen. Last thing. Your process is always about the level of your, of, of your understanding of the truth because truth is the standard for everything in the kingdom God does not operate independent of truth and if he cannot process us in truth then we cannot move forward to the accomplishment of the, of the things of the spirit of God that he wants us to be able to accomplish because Truth is the standard. It's the foundation and it's the standard. So, if I'm a liar, I need to say, Lord, I'm a liar. If I'm bitter, I need to say, Lord, I'm bitter and I need help. If I don't want to forgive them, I need to say, Lord, I don't want to forgive them. You're going to have to help me. And then in the place where you've been where, 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 where you've been bitter or you've been hurt by whatever caused that bitterness, once you forgive them, you're going to have to ask God to heal you. My, my wife opened this wisdom up to me. The, the Lord had said to her that, you know, you can be, you can be wounded and forgive but not be healed. And we got a lot of people that say, well, I forgave them, but you're not healed. Because you're still carrying around the same hurt and the same pain. 
and you're wrestling in your own mind with the fact that you're still hurting. How I, I forgave him, but why am I still hurt? Because you never got healing. So we need the Lord to heal the wound. Are you hearing? And again, it's part, of, it's part of, of God processing you to bring you and put you in position to be able to help someone else. Can we hear that? All right. Come on, stand to your feet. I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to stop right here.